Welcome back to the M. Graham Swatching Series. This is the final, final episode. Thank you so much for sticking by me through swatching every single colors. And I'm going to talk to you guys about the unique colors from M. Graham, the Color Wheel Palette colors, different tinting strengths as a way to narrow down what colors you might want to buy from M. Graham. Let's first start with the M. Graham Most Unique Colors charts. And these are the colors that I think are most unique about M. Graham. We have the Elysium Crimson and Permanent Elysium Crimson. I chose both because they're both beautiful colors, but you obviously won't need one or the other, but people have really strong preference as to whether they want the real thing or the per more light fast permanent version. So these two colors are gorgeous. And you have the maroon perylene, which again was beautiful, beautiful color. The anthraquinone blue, which was gorgeous and it, it neutralizes so well with the azure orange and produces such a deep dark black color. Then have the cobalt teal, which is a beautiful, beautiful color, and it's a nice, bright, happy version of the cobalt teal, and it has a really good granulation. Then turquoise, viridian. I picked viridian because it's actually probably the most intense, genuine viridian you get out there, and it's also really easy to rewet. And viridians tend to be hard to rewet if it's the genuine stuff. Naples Yellow because it is a really high tinting strength Naples Yellow. And then the Transparent Orange Iron Oxide for the mixes it can create. And then also the Terra Rosa. I think these are the standout colors from M. Graham. Another way to pick your colors from M. Graham is the Color Wheel palette that we discussed in the previous episode, which I will link up here. And these are the colors. I'm not going to go through them again because you can take a better look at it in that video. But that is definitely another way to do it if you don't have a full or organized palette yet and you want to start with M. Graham colors and then add your own other favorite colors, then this is a great way to start. Another way that I am very passionate about in terms of how you pick your paint for your palette and how you design your palette is making a consideration about how low or how high a tinting strength of a color is and how it matches with your palette. This is why I've consistently had tinting strengths on my test sheets, even on the mini ones that we've been using for this series. And it's because if you have a lot of high tinting strength colors, and then let's say you have a very low tinting strength colors, mixing them, I'm not saying you can't mix the two because you totally can, but mixing them gets really stressful because you need a ton of the low tinting strengths one and just like a teeny, teeny, teeny touch of the very high tinting strengths ones and the very high tinting strengths color will probably likely to overpower the low tint strengths color anyway. So for example, I have very high tinting strength colors in my palette. So I'm going to be looking at like the high tint strengths and very high tint strengths colors rather than the very low and the low tint strengths colors. I'm not saying I wouldn't use them, but if you have a lot of variance in your tint strengths on your palette, it's going to surprise you each time when you come to mix high and low colors together. So it's just something to bear in mind if you are finding it stressful to color mix and sometimes they really surprise you because you need a ton of one color and just a tiny bit of the other, then maybe consider tinting strengths. Another way a viewer has told me what she's done is she's made one palette out of the higher tinting strengths colors and another palette for the lower tinting strengths colors. And I think that's a really good idea because then you have awareness straight away when you want to mix the low tint with high tint because you're going to another palette to get the low tint colors, you're aware of it. So it's not going to surprise you. And I think that's a really good idea. Anyway, so let's have a look at these colors. We have the very low tint strengths. We have ultramarine pink, ultramarine violet deep, and transparent yellow iron oxide. I'm not gonna go through all the colors, don't worry. If you wanna have a look and have a reference of this, I do put up high red scans of all the test sheets that I do in my videos up on my Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash autocano. 
so do check it out there so we only have three very low tint strands colors and then two four six eight nine low tint strands and then obviously we have a big chunk of medium strength colors and then we have the high tint strength colors I put question mark on Chinese white and titanium white opaque because I did find that they have a higher tinting strength than other colors but if you remember from the episode where we discussed this which I will link up here it color shifted a lot and what looked like a very high tinting strength became it dried and it lost the whiteness from the color mix so I don't know where to put these I classified it on the chart as very high tinting strength so I'm gonna stick with that for now but it's with a question mark it's probably more like a high tint strength color so for me I would be mostly looking to select from these sections but also the medium strength colors as well because they're so really pretty but you'll notice that I don't really have colors like Viridian and Cobalt Violet on my palette because then it's going to be a headache and a constant surprise of why are these colors so unbalanced. I'm really passionate <laughs> about the tint strengths and I hope that by me talking about tint strengths and how you should be aware of it, then it helps you to not have a stressful time in color mixing so that is it for this episode and also for this series thank you so so much for watching all the way through on the mgram swatching series it has been so much fun there are beautiful beautiful colors great if you also live in like a dry area because they have honey in it so they're never going to bone dry on you be a little bit careful when you're storing them if you have more cooler, damper, humid kind of weather though because they will never set and if you turn the palette upside down or store them sideways those paints will slide. So what I do with these is I only fill one side of the palette. Let me show you. So this is how I store my M. Graham colors and I always write store this side up and bottom so that I know not to turn it the wrong way and then I put a tape here to remind me to not fill colors up here because then it's going to be facing downwards when I close the palette and obviously that is going to just melt everywhere and I only fill one side of the palette and then I will store them in a basket flat so that they don't go anywhere and they don't slide everywhere they don't leak everywhere I've had that experience with Sennelier which also has honey in them so this is just a final tip I wanted to give you guys before we finish this series do let me know what you think of M. Graham and if you've enjoyed this series and yeah it's been a great journey and great fun and so many beautiful colors we are also going to be starting the new seasons of Colossal Color Showdown, which I am very excited about. And I hope you guys are excited too. So that will all start next month. And that's it. Thank you so much to M. Graham for providing some of the colors and also for Tanu for supplying some other colors. They really, really helped in making this series possible. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't to hit the like button, comment away because they all really help growing this channel. And I will see you guys in a new series. Bye.